Hello programmers, the information covered in this presentation is so important to your future programming efforts that I spent several hours on making the video. I am using the conversions between Fahrenheit and Celsius as a starting point because many people are already familiar with this process. Although the temperature conversion formulas are well known and you may be able to plug them in directly into a program, it is extremely important to know the process of how these algorithms were developed because you will need to develop similar algorithms in your programming career. This presentation also covers some very important information about how to implement the formula into code using integers and floating point data types such as float and double. What may look like good code can cause totally incorrect results. I will show you why and ways to fix the problem. Topics covered in this presentation include developing the algorithm for Fahrenheit and Celsius conversions, how this algorithm can be similar in other projects, converting the algorithm into code, determining expected values for when the program runs, validating that the program produces correct results, determining and fixing errors in the code, and providing sample code in C, C++, and to Java. This is part one of the discussion. We will review the different scales for measuring temperature, develop algorithms for converting between Fahrenheit and Celsius, identify possible implementations for future projects. There are two common ways of describing temperature used by people today, Fahrenheit and Celsius. It has been reported that Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit decided that zero degrees Fahrenheit would be defined as the temperature where a solution of salted brine water became frozen. After some measurements of where water boiled, he set that temperature on his scale to 180 degrees past freezing, which became 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The other common scale for measuring temperature was originally called centigrade. Zero degrees C is defined where water freezes at sea level and boils at 100 degrees C. The prefix cent is from Latin, meaning 100. Since Fahrenheit was named after a person, it would be nice to name centigrade after a person whose name started with C. Centigrade is now known as Celsius, named after the Swedish scientist Anders Celsius. One more way of describing temperature is the Kelvin method, which defines zero degrees K as absolute zero to represent the total absence of thermal energy. Kelvin is similar to Celsius, except for the definition of absolute zero. Zero degrees K is actually negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. The Scottish Irish physicist and mathematician William Thompson is better known as Lord Kelvin and was one of the most eminent scientists of the 19th century, so he got something named after him. While most of the world uses temperatures measured in Celsius, the United States still uses the Fahrenheit scale except for scientific research where Celsius or Kelvin is used. Maybe someday I will be as famous as Mickey Mouse and some units of measure will be named after me. Did you know the X and Y units of measurement for the motion of the computer mouse are called Mickey's? M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E, -E Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse, forever let us hold his banner high. Actually, the Mickey doesn't have anything to do with this presentation, but I thought you might find it interesting. Back to temperature conversion. To convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius, the values inside the parentheses need to be calculated first, unless you have parentheses on your calculator. Take the Fahrenheit value, subtract 32, then multiply by 5 and divide by 9. We need to place degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 in parentheses because the 32 needs to be subtracted before the multiplication occurs. The scientific view for calculator apps have the parentheses keys. To select the scientific view on the Microsoft Windows app, click the hamburger icon, three horizontal lines. Click the View menu on Mac OS app to select Scientific. You can rotate an iPhone long ways to get the Scientific view on the Calculator app. Depending on the Calculator app for Android, it may already have the parentheses. Let's try some conversions. Change 100 degrees F into Celsius. 
5 divided by 9 times, open parentheses, 100 minus 32, close parentheses, equals 37.8 degrees Celsius. Round it up to one digit past the decimal. Change 20 degrees C into Fahrenheit. 9 divided by 5 times 20 plus 32 becomes 68 degrees F, which is enjoyable weather. How about if we have 20 degrees Fahrenheit? That is 12 degrees below the freezing temperature of 30 degrees Fahrenheit. 5 divided by 9 times open parentheses 20 minus 32 close parentheses becomes negative 6.7 rounded to one digit past the decimal. That is really cold regardless of which method you use. Let's try some other conversions. Change 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit into Celsius. 5 divided by 9 times open parentheses 98.6 minus 32 close parentheses is exactly 37 degrees Celsius. 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit is the beginning of a high temperature. Convert that to Celsius. 5 divided by 9 times open parentheses 100.4 minus 32 close parentheses is exactly 38 degrees Celsius. It looks like the medical field just used temperature of 37 degrees Celsius for normal and 38 degrees Celsius for a high temperature and then converted them to Fahrenheit for us Americans to use. I am going to save the results in a table to verify correct operation of the program when the formulas are converted into code. If everything works properly, you should be able to do the conversions from Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit. Since the formulas have already been developed, you can just plug them into your program and get the answer. What I am most interested in here is not just the formulas themselves, but how they were created. You most likely will need to use a similar process for other programming tasks in your career. If I lay out the temperature scales horizontally, for Celsius the range from freezing to boiling is 0 degrees to 100 degrees. The difference between freezing and boiling is 100 degrees. For Fahrenheit, the range from freezing to boiling is 32 degrees to 212 degrees, which is a difference of 180 degrees. But there is an offset from 0 degrees to where water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The scale from Celsius to Fahrenheit is 180 divided by 100. Both are divisible by 20, which gives 9 divided by 5. The multiplier going from Fahrenheit to Celsius is 5 divided by 9. The multiplier going from Celsius is 9 divided by 5. This is called the scale multiplier. The easy way to remember is that the number for boiling on Fahrenheit is larger and Celsius is smaller. Use the multiplier 9 divided by 5 when going to Fahrenheit. Use 5 divided by 9 when going to Celsius. We also need to consider the 32 degrees difference in freezing that occurs for Fahrenheit. This is called the offset which needs to either be added or subtracted. That offset is used to adjust for the difference in the definition of zero degrees. The multiplier is used to adjust the scale from water freezing to water boiling. When going from Fahrenheit to Celsius, we need to subtract the 32 degrees before applying the multiplier. So we will need parentheses when we write the formula into code. When going from Celsius to Fahrenheit, we need to add the 32 degrees after the 9 divided by 5 multiplier. You will need to develop a similar algorithm when putting graphics image on the screen or a printout. The X offset is the position in pixels from the left edge of the paper moving from left to right. The multiplier scale is the ratio between the number of points to be displayed and the number of pixels used. Computer graphics systems define the point of origin 0, 0 as the upper left most point. This is true for a computer monitor on a printed paper, cell phone, tablet, or other devices. Values for X go to the left as they increase, and the values for Y go down as they increase. The Y values are positive going down. The starting point of an image is also going to have an X and Y offset based on the upper left corner of the image. Computing X positions on the image are similar to the conversion from 0 degrees C to 0 degrees F. 
But computing Y positions on an image is somewhat more complicated because going up means that the value gets closer to zero instead of moving away from it. I am not going to cover any more about computer graphics here. I just want for you to understand how the algorithms for converting between Fahrenheit and Celsius will be similar to other things you will run into in the future. If the temperature conversions were not totally clear, I suggest that you go back at least review them one more time. After seeing them once or twice again, then just keep going through the presentation because there are other things to cover. You can always go back and review just this topic again. We already have math formulas for converting between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Now I'll convert them into code. This is how I want the program to work. The program displays a prompt message. Enter a temperature and F or C. Then it reads the temperature and either an F or C to select either Fahrenheit or Celsius scale. For example, if the user enters 68 F, the program computes the equivalent temperature in Celsius and then displays both temperatures in Fahrenheit and Celsius. Here is a flowchart for the program. The program displays a prompt message requesting a temperature and either F or C. If the scale input is F, then compute and display the Celsius temperature. If the scale input is C, then compute and display the Fahrenheit temperature. If neither F nor C were input, then display an error message. Let's convert the formulas that were provided into code. The double data type is being used for variables named temperature, Fahrenheit, and Celsius. The char data type is used for inputting either F or C. Here is a code segment of the program that shows the variable declarations and conversions from Fahrenheit to Celsius and from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Celsius equals 5 divided by 9, then multiplied by the Fahrenheit temperature value from the keyboard minus 32. Multiplication and division have a higher priority than addition and subtraction. We need parentheses because 5 divided by 9 needs multiplied by the full value of the temperature minus 32. Although math formulas assume multiplication in front of parentheses, we need to explicitly use the asterisk symbol to specify multiplication. Fahrenheit equals 9 divided by 5 multiplied by the Celsius value from the keyboard and then add 32. Here is the full program in C. The temperature variable holds the value read from the keyboard. The scale variable holds either the F or C read from the keyboard. The temperature value will either be converted into Celsius or Fahrenheit. The program then displays both the Fahrenheit and Celsius values. A couple of cool things when entering the code in the computer. On a Microsoft Windows system, the degree symbol can be entered using its character code. Make sure that the numlock on the keyboard is turned on. Hold down the Alt key and type 0176 on the numeric keypad. Release the Alt key. If you don't have a numeric keypad on your keyboard, you can use the character map. Hold down the Windows key and tap the Q key. Select Character Map, the one with a key, not a magnifying glass. Select a degree symbol, click the Select button, then the Copy button. You can now paste the degree symbol into your code. Wow! Check out the lower right corner of the character map. It gives the key code for the degree symbol. It is Alt plus 0176. If you're using a Mac, Use Option Shift 8. The easy way to remember this is that the Shift 8 is the asterisk. Option Shift 8 is the degree symbol. It looks like a circle instead of a star. In part 3 of the discussion, we run the program and make sure its output matches the values computed with the calculator for the expected values. If the values don't match, we need to determine why this happened and then update the code to fix the errors. Let's see how the program works and if it produces the expected values. Fill in the table with the actual values. Run the program. Enter 20 F for the first value. The program says 20 degrees F converts to negative 0.0 degrees C. The expected value was negative 6.67 degrees C. 
The negative sign on that 0.0, .0 degrees C is weird. So what do we enter into the table? We could always fudge the table to make it look like the values matched. No good. No bueno. Nice good. Con tot. Les jaded. Non va bene. Buhao. Demeda. I don't care how you say it. If it ain't right, don't write it down. Maybe the next computation will be better. Let's try converting 20 degrees C into Fahrenheit. The program says 20 degrees C converts to 52 degrees Fahrenheit. The expected value is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. How about one more conversion? Third time's a charm. Maybe it will be correct this time. 98.6 degrees F should convert to 20 degrees C, but it shows as 0.0, .0 degrees C. Something just ain't right here, Batman. Look carefully at the conversion formula and see if it was coded correctly. Celsius, 5 divided by 9 times open parentheses, temperature minus 32, close parentheses, semicolon. It looks good to me so far. We could try hard coding at 20 in place of the variable temperature to see if we get negative 6.67 degrees C. Nope, that wasn't it. Put temperature back in the program. Okay, I will just give you the reason that the computation is failing. Let's go back to the discussion on division. An integer 5 divided by an integer 9 has a quotient of 0 and a remainder of 5. The slash symbol for integer division gives the quotient. The percent symbol for integer division gives the remainder. Evaluating 5 divided by 9 is always 0, and 9 divided by 5 will always be 1, remainder 4. It doesn't matter that we are storing the result in a double data type or that we are multiplying by a double data type for temperature. What is happening is that the expression 5 divided by 9 times open parenthesis temperature minus 32 close parenthesis semicolon is being evaluated from left to right with the integer division of 5 divided by 9 occurring first. Looking at the declarations for these variables, num1 and num3 are integers while num2 and num4 are floating point variables. The first math operation is num1 divided by num2. Since num2 is a double, num1 is promoted to a double before the division occurs. The result of the division is a double, 0 0.555556, which is then added to the num3 integer. Since the result of the division is a double, num3 is promoted to a double and the result is 32.555556. The assignment operator equal sign is evaluated right to left, which means that everything on the right side of the equal sign gets evaluated first before the result is placed into num4. Let's change num2 to an integer. Moving from left to right, num1 divided by num2 is an integer division 5 divided by 9, which is an integer 0, not 0 0.55556. The integer result of the integer division is added to num3, which is a double. The integer result of 0 is promoted to a double, 0.0, .0 when added to the double 32, giving 32.0, which is then stored into num4. This is a problem that mostly occurs when there is an integer division followed by data with a double data type. We should not see this type of problem when mixing integers and real numbers doing addition, subtraction, or multiplication. One way to solve the problem is to use 5.0 divided by 9.0 so that we will be doing a floating point division instead of an integer division. The result will be 0 0.55556 instead of 0. We could even do 5.0 divided by 9 because the integer 9 will be promoted to a double because 5.0 is a double. The second way to solve the problem is to cast either or both the 5 and the 9 into a double. Open parentheses, double close parentheses, 5 divided by 9 times open parentheses, temperature minus 32 close parentheses. The open parentheses, double close parentheses, cast operator only treats the 5 as a double during this one computation and does not change the 5 into a double later in the code. 
A cast operator can be placed in front of variables as well as constants or literals. A third solution is to place the 5 divided by 9 after the part of the expression evaluation that contains a double, such as the temperature. Celsius equals open parentheses temperature minus 32 close parentheses times 5 divided by 9 semicolon. Because the variable temperature is a double, the 32 is promoted to a double, and while moving from left to right, we have the double before the 5, so it gets promoted from integer to double, and the same for the 9. Regardless of which method you choose to get the 5 divided by 9 to be computed as a double instead of an integer, you will get the correct results of converting 20 degrees Celsius into 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and the same for all other temperature conversions. When coding your programs and you are mixing integers and floating point numbers, float or double, it is best to specifically declare numbers as double when you want this to happen, instead of relying on the compiler to make the promotion for you. Therefore, the first solution, 5.0 divided by 9.0, is the best way to fix the program instead of any other examples. What I really want you to get out of this possibly confusing problem is for you to really understand what happens when you are mixing integer and floating point data types. Because sometimes you may end up with the correct computation, and other times the compiler is doing what it is programmed, but not necessarily what you think should happen. I am providing links to the code for the program using C, C++, and Java at https colon slash slash program dash info dot net slash capital F number two capital C slash and in the comments section of the video. Watch the capitalization for F to C. Although example code for converting between Fahrenheit and Celsius was used in the discussion, the important things covered were how the algorithm was developed, computing several values with the calculator to be used as expected values before running the program, converting the algorithm into code, running the program and verifying that the expected values match the actual values, fixing the program so that it produces correct results, Reviewing data type promotions. Goodbye for now. I'm looking forward to the next video. Dandolph signing off for now. Remember, one gigabyte to rule them all.